Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about Tampa Bay Buccaneers linebacker, Devin White. And diving in deeper into how his 2023 season has been going this year. And to be blunt, why I think he had a huge, huge opportunity versus the Indianapolis Colts and just absolutely squandered it. And how I think that is going to shape his future moving forward. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Firstly, going into Devin White's 2023 year, it is all the orange highlight stats that you see right here. It's been a rough year for Devin White, all things considered. The stats are seemingly okay on the surface. One interception, you have three passes defended, two sacks, 69 total tackles on the year. But what has been frustrating for a lot of Bucks fans on the field is that Devin White just seemingly disappears for a good amount of games. We have seen that time and time and time and time again this year where Devin White is just not being an impactful player on the team. He's not making the splash plays he used to make back in, let's say, 2020 in the Buccaneers Super Bowl year. Back in even, let's just say, like 2022 or 2021, where you saw more splash plays from Devin White, you're not seeing that this year. It just seems like Devin White has been on a decline since that Super Bowl year, and it seems like it's been kind of peaking this year in 2023, where Devin White point blank simple as this, has not been making enough splash plays. Certainly not for a guy who's in the prime of his career, 25 years old, former number five overall pick, and is a guy that you have expectations to be the leader of this defense, to be a top dog, if not the top dog on this defense. He's disappeared for chunks of time throughout this year, and it's incredibly, incredibly noticeable. And even whenever he is out there making a play here, a play there, it's not consistent enough, again, with top guys. It's just been something that has been very noticeable. I know a lot of people have expressed frustration about it in the comment sections and in live streams and whatnot we've done uh, here on the channel. And that's just on the field, right? And that's something that everybody has already acknowledged, has already talked about. Then you couple in the off the field situations. And obviously Devin White's not getting into any type of trouble or anything like that. I don't want to say that that narrative is a thing. It's not, it's not at all. But what brings people frustration with Devin White is the trade request that happened. And even Devin White coming back and saying, hey, you know, that wasn't a good call by me. It still happened, man. I mean, hindsight's 2020, obviously. Hopefully you would put some thought into that type of thing before you make it, even if it was an emotional decision. You know, having a level of understanding as to what that means, as to potential bridges that that could burn with maybe not even the organization, but the fan base is, is something that should have been considered in that situation. I get it. Devin White's still a very young man and I'm all for giving people second chances. Absolutely. And to judge people is, is fully is not something that I'm 100% here to do because I, I want to be open and understanding of, of where people are coming from. But it is also needs to be stated that, yeah, a lot of people are going to be upset whenever something like that is done. And that's just one thing. Then you take into the level of the contract situation of Devin White and him wanting $20 million per year. You know, we looked at the Jeremy Fowler report where Devin White wanted $20 million per year in a contract. We had made, I'd made another video talking about that and... That's another thing where you look at the overall play of Devin White and it's like, man, in 2020, probably was a guy who who deserved $20 million per year, right? Now, now I, I think that you'd be hard pressed if the freaking, if, if I could see the stats, but I'd be hard pressed to, to give him more than what he's making right now at $11 million, around $12 million per year. Right, that's an eight million dollar difference because Devin White isn't playing like a twenty million dollar per year player, and unless his contract demands change this off season, it's not going to be a situation where, in all honesty, from my opinion, he's going to get that money from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Point blank, simple as that, because he's not playing like a twenty million dollar guy right now. He's not. He's not playing like a top linebacker in the league right now. 
because he's he's not making the splash plays that you see from top linebackers. He's not making the consistent plays that you see from top linebackers. A great example is the guy who's already on the team in Levante David, a guy who has been arguably the best player on this Bucks defense, if not number two behind Antoine Winfield Jr. That's the type of play you give a guy $20 million per year to. And we're just not seeing that from Devin White. We're not. It's it's not a thing. So unless his contract demand change, he's not getting $20 million per year from the Bucks. No way getting $20 million per year from the Bucks. If he does, I'd be shocked. I would be shocked. Especially given all the other people the Buccaneers need to sign this offseason, I would be shocked. But the biggest thing for me is those different types of things that have happened, the contract negotiations, the trade request that was made, the on-field play that had already happened, right? To be blunt, this is why I feel Devin White is not coming back to the Bucks, And it just happened. Just happened recently. Buccaneers lost on November 26th, the Indianapolis Colts 27-20. What made this game even more important for, for Devin White was Levante David was not in this game. He was not. This was the game for Devin White, in my opinion, and people may think differently, to prove that he is the guy on this defense. He is the present. He is the future. He's the guy that you can lock in for the next seven years, eight years, nine years, whatever it may be. This was Devin White's big, big opportunity to showcase that without Levante David, he can be a guy that can go out there, lead a defense, command a defense, make splash plays, be a guy that can make an impact. What did he do? He got seven total tackles in the game. One quarterback hit, gave up a touchdown on a Gardner Minshew scramble where he took a really, really bad angle. And I know that that's a tough play to make for a linebacker. I get that. It was just a really tough play on the one yard line. But even taking that play away, what did Devin White do in that game that was impactful? I don't know either. Point being is Devin White failed to make an impact when it was the greatest opportunity for him to have to showcase he could make an impact on his own. If Devin White goes out there now and makes some great plays, what's going to stop me or Bucks fans from believing that it's because Levante David's there to help. We needed we needed to see Devin White make an impact on his own, where he is helping guys be better, where he is a guy who is single handedly making a ton of splash plays, where where in all honesty, where the guy did it in 2020, where the guy did it in some moments in 2021, even a little bit in 2022, he didn't do it in a contract year where he wants 20 million dollars per year. He didn't do it. And that's telling, right? That's telling. Where, to me, that signals, that's it. Th 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 he's not coming back. Because that was your moment, man. And look, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm just pointing out what I think this means. Like, I'm not mad at Devin White. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. It's, it's just, it's just pointing out the situation of what I feel this means for Devin White now. And in my opinion, based on all those things that we just talked about, especially this Colts game, which was the final nail in the coffin for me, folks. It seems like Devin White's time in Tampa Bay is for sure going to be coming to an end after this season. I don't think he's going to be re-signed. And I think that ultimately, he has proven that he's not going to be the guy for this Buccaneers defense moving forward with his career. So what do you guys think about all this? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear. Do you agree with my takes? Do you disagree with my takes? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. I know that there's been a lot of people very split up on Devin White, very um, opinionated and whatnot. Just wanted to give you guys the facts here from my perspective, as well as some of my own thoughts and opinions on how I feel this situation is going for Devin White. And yeah, hopefully hopefully I've made my, uh, my points clear. So yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. 
Hope you all enjoyed. As always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.